What do you get when two customers ask for a whiskey highball but don't really know what that is? Well, you get the new idea for a great new special. That's what you get. Hey there, hi there, ho there, and how are you doing? Welcome to Mike's Hard Reviews. My name is Mike. I'm one of the bartenders of the Hilton Gardens Inn Hotel in Kalamazoo, Michigan, pictured here. And today we're going to be talking about, uh, for the first time actually, one of my own special drinks, just on its own. So the best thing about my job that I really enjoy is the creativity I get to express through the medium of mixology. And in a lot of ways, um, I get to take in whatever I learn from my customers and put that back out into the universe in the form of a drink. And that's actually um, what happened here. The story goes essentially that I was trying to find a new, more simple special. Um, I was working with a special called the Rum Sorbet for a little bit there. Um, and it was actually quite good. People really did enjoy the drink. But the problem was that there were so many different unique um, ingredients that went into it and there was a, kind of, you know, a lot of extra steps and you had to be really, really careful with your measurements or else it threw the whole thing out of whack. It wasn't as refined as it needed to be to be on that special menu. And as much as people enjoyed it, I felt like it was too complicated to get out quickly in the event that a lot of people ordered it, which they did. It was a matter of trying to figure out how I could replace that with something a bit more understandable, something a bit easier to do. What ended up happening was, while I was thinking of ways I could replace that special, I had a pair of customers come down into the, into the uh, bar and they ordered whiskey highballs. Now, uh, I wanted to make sure I was making them the right thing. So I asked them, oh, so a whiskey and soda with some lemon or something in there like that? You know, it's just something just to get an idea of what they were expecting. And they were like, actually, I thought the highball was made with ginger ale. So that's what I made them. Uh, I made them Canadian Club 12 year uh, whiskey highballs with ginger ale and lemon juice, and they enjoyed them. But that moment really stuck with me because what ended up happening was because it was somewhere in between a, you know, uh, a highball that is technically just with club soda and a mule, which is with ginger beer that we nicknamed it the donkey. And the name stuck, but the recipe changed. And now, as you can see in front of you, I have a collection of ingredients that create a easy to drink, super approachable, really friendly and delicious cocktail that I'm going to make for you right now. So let's dive into that. Okay, so this is one of the very few drinks that I am going to start off with that does not require a shaker because there really isn't any way to combine these ingredients, you know, in a way that or the ingredients themselves, in fact, don't require you to use a shaker. We're actually going to start off by building this into a highball glass over cracked ice. So I've got two large ice cubes right here. I'm going to crack those into the glass. It's ice, you don't need you don't need to be super stingy about it. It's, well, it's ice. Next, we're gonna start off with our spirit. Now, um, as you can see here, I've got this collection of, in of ingredients here. Uh, this original recipe was designed to be made with a cheaper uh, Canadian whiskey, and I'm gonna go with Canadian Club here. As I add this though, uh, we're gonna add one ounce of this. Um, I do wanna say, um, I have tried this a bunch of different ways with a bunch of different um, whiskeys, and I think there's something to be said for each one of them. Bourbons, rye, Canadians, and actually corn whiskey all work super, super well. Uh, and the reason I say that is because there's a certain um, flavor composition to all of those uh, liquors that just fits well with what we're doing here. Basically, what these ingredients amount to is an enhanced whiskey highball with prominent ginger flavors and really strong, sweet citrus to balance out some of the spice in uh, your whiskey. So that's why we went for a Canadian. Spice heavy, but not in your face. The thing is, you wanna have a uh, a liquor that suits it well. Like for example, hold on. I bought countless bottles of different things to try and tried countless different things in this drink. And somehow the cheap Canadian club, not this one, but um, the one behind it, the regular Canadian club, was the best one. Um, and I think it's because of the natural sweetness Canadian whiskeys have, um, and in particular Canadian club has, um, compared to, you know, the spice content and the oak impact on the whiskey. There's a lot that goes into this, basically. I've tried this a lot of ways. This is the best way to make it. Uh, next up, we are going to do uh, an ounce or anywhere between a half an ounce and an ounce of um, sweet and sour. Um, as you can see here, I have Daly's sweet and sour. I wouldn't recommend going in with anything cheaper than this. Um, I have like some Florida, Florida citrus, Florida sun something, um, sweet and sour as well. It's, it's garbage. You want something that has prominent orange and lemon flavors in it 
that appear basically simultaneously. You don't want there to be a huge divide between the flavors. You want something that is, you know, unanimous and brings bold orange and bright lemon. Uh, and what you're gonna get with this dailies is, in fact, what do you want? You want that like sweet yet, you know, not sickly so uh, flavor going on there. So we're gonna do an ounce of that. Remember folks, keep your bar space clean. Prevent bugs and drunk customers from making a mess of things. Now that we have our sweet and sour in there, um, I actually think you can skip this next step, but what we're gonna do is add some simple syrup. Um, this is supposed to be a sweet drink, a super approachable drink, and you don't need a lot of this because of the sweet and sour, but um, what I think definitely helps is having just a little bit of sugar in there, raw sugar, just to enhance those orange and uh, lemon flavors. We're also going to kind of mitigate that out with our next step. So you're gonna need a bitters of some kind. This in particular is Buck Spice Junior by Bitterman's. Um, this is great stuff. I actually have never used this before, but I didn't have a ginger bitters on hand uh, to do this at my home bar. So this is the one I went with from a local liquor store and by God, is it good. Um, really strong uh, ginger flavors with really heavy spice notes. Uh, it's delicious stuff. We're gonna add, you know, anywhere from two to four dashes of this into this drink. I usually go for around two and a half, three full dashes. So what that ginger bitters is gonna do is enhance the flavor of our next ingredient, uh, ginger ale. Um, and the ginger ale I have at work is notably pretty garbage, but because I live in Michigan, I have the glorious advantage of being able to work with Werner's, the best ginger ale on the market. Uh, come at me if you disagree. <laughs> This post was paid for by Werner's Gang. But much like any highball, you're just gonna take your, you know, carbonated component and you're going to pour it over to fill, basically. Werner's has this thing where, like, its carbonation is so strong, it will, like, hop into your nose and make you cough. It's the best thing ever. So, to finish the drink off, all we have to do is stir those components together. And you're gonna wanna make sure you get down to the bottom here. I've got a nice long bar spoon here. You're gonna wanna give it just a quick swizzle at the bottom to start to aerate some of that stuff and then give it a gentle mix to combine. You're just trying to get that sweet and sour and the sibyl you put in there mixed into the rest of what's in the glass. And as you're seeing, this is, you know, bringing out like a super nice, super frothy, lightly carbonated uh, orange color. And it's it, it's really nice. It, it, it looks, unassuming, but the amount of flavor we've just packed into this drink as a result is fantastic. And here we have it, ladies and gentlemen, a donkey. So like I said, you're getting that really nice light orange color, just very ambery, kind of like a, a beer actually with the carbonation too. But the flavors in here are unmatched, unmitigated, delicious. Yep. Yep, that's, that is exactly what you want. That is so good. So really what you're getting more than anything else is this really prominent ginger flavor. And the reason why I went for a ginger ale instead of a ginger beer is because you're getting that ginger flavor from the bitters here, which also adds a spicy bitter-like component. That's not something you want to add. I mean, you could add it to a ginger beer, but the, sh the sharpness of a ginger beer in comparison to a ginger ale means that that's not gonna work as well, it's not gonna be as approachable, it might be kind of a lot of flavor to pack in, and it would completely over overstate um, the flavors we're getting from the sweet and sour and the whiskey. More than anything else, I think, what you're really getting here is kind of an enhanced ginger ale. Ginger's most of what you're getting, but you're getting those light citrus notes underneath. And in fact, actually, I think, uh, I think I might actually need to make a slight improvement to this drink as I speak. I made this to spec for how I make it at my restaurant, or rather my bar, um, because in my bar we have like 10 ounce, 11 ounce-ish uh, highball glasses. This is a 14.4 ounce highball glass. And I thought to myself, I was like, well, do I make a double? Well, no, I can make a double. The glass isn't that big. I could pack two ounces of Canadian Club in here, but maybe that's not super, good considering that I don't want to overpower all those other flavors. Everything has to be in balance here. It's really important. I'm actually not getting the whiskey at all, so I am going to add a second ounce of whiskey just to make this work. Now, I have been building these in larger glasses like this in one and a half time proportion. What that does is raises the whiskey and the sweet and sour to one and a half ounces. Uh, then I usually keep the, sweet, the simple syrup to uh, half an ounce, but then everything else is built the same. So you're just basically getting the two main flavor components 
in larger quantities into the drink so that they aren't lost in that ginger ale, ginger bitters combo. More than anything, what the whiskey is doing here, should be doing here anyway, is giving you this kind of low note throughout, throughout your sip. So take the sip and immediately you get those bright orange, sweet lemon flavors and the ginger, the bitters is bringing in this really nice spicy kind of flavor to it as well. But below all of that, you're getting what is, you know, generally considered a cheap whiskey, providing a good amount of solid base flavor behind all of this. And that's what makes this so good, I think. The fact that when you take that sip, what you're getting is just this delicious, in your, you know, in your nose, in your mouth, whole flavor that is both low and high at the same time, but never overpower it. It's just a well-composed drink. Um, for lack of a better phrase. It's very, very good, honestly. And it's simple too. Like that's the thing, for something as simple with ingredients like this that you wouldn't normally think you would pack into an, an actual bar special drink, uh, it works. It just works, it works really well, I think. Do I risk making myself a second one for the thumbnail picture? I think I am in fact going to finish this one. That, ladies and gentlemen, was the donkey. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed that quick little romp into um, one of my personal cocktails. Honestly, it's weird not having any super like historical thing or like precedent to talk about something like this. It's just something that I came up with. But hey, we did it and it tastes really good. Uh, the recipe for it will be in the description down below if you want to follow it there. Um, but yeah, uh, I think we've, I, I think I've managed to make a pretty, pretty darn good special that I am working through remarkably fast because it is super easy to drink. But that is today's episode. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this little trip down custom cocktails lane. There are a couple others that I do want to talk about drinks that I've come up with. Um, and I do want to bring back the Garden of Eden in its own episode to talk about the idea of enhanced syrups and what role they play in cocktails. So they, yeah, that'll be coming down the pipeline, probably next. If you want to keep track of what I'm doing or follow me on any social media, I'm not super active on there yet, but every time a new episode comes out, you do get a notification. You can follow me on Twitter at MikeHardReviews, and if you go there and give me a follow, you can also DM me and tell me what drinks you want me to show off on the uh, show here. Anyway, then, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Like I said, follow me on Twitter and give me a subscribe down below if you're interested in following the show. Uh, as always, new episodes are going to be available every noon on uh, every Saturday every noon every saturday at noon uh, eastern standard time thank you guys so much for watching until the next episode stay tipsy